My husband of 13 years is against having our cat euthanized implies I want to murder the cat for being an inconvenience. This is OKOP, home to the craziest true stories on earth. I'm Sophia and Riley, if I was an inconvenience, would you euthanize me? Duh. <laughs> well, there you have it. So throw away 65, 31, 25, 5, 1 says... Uh, for context, I am 36 female and my husband, 39 male, has had our cat for seven years. We don't know how old he is as we adopted him from a deceased neighbor and he was already an adult. We think he's likely pretty old, but there's no way to tell. A year ago, he began acting strange. Hmm. <laughs> mm, how strange. <laughs> what does this mean? I won't go into it, but we knew something was wrong. Go into it. Why was he acting strange? Yeah. That's so vague. Was he like speaking in, in tongues? Or was he like, you see him one place and then you see him again and then you're like, deja vu. Yeah. Matrix. Yeah. Remember that in the Matrix? I never saw the Matrix. Okay. Please let me know if you've seen it. I took him to the vet and they decided it was hyperthyroidism. Mm, let's look this up. <laughs> Guesses? Is that like in the legs? Yes. Happens when the thyroid gland makes too much thyroid hormones. <laughs> I don't know where the thyroids are. Um, this is a very manageable condition. Ah. ah. So they put him on some medication. He didn't get better. He became anorexic and went from nine pounds to five pounds. Oh, no. Ooh. What did he lose? What do you mean? Did he lose some like organs? Like that's a lot yeah, of pounds. That's a lot of pounds for a cat. We kept adjusting his hyper T meds, but his T4 count dipped dangerously low at some point and he had to be taken off of it. He's now partially blind, partially deaf, can only eat about 25% of what he needs to sustain him, can't get to the litter box on his own, is racked with severe twitches at all times, lacks the strength to hold his head all the way up or walk correctly, and he walks almost exclusively in clockwise circles. That's the strange things he's been doing. Oh, Yeah. It is heartbreaking to watch him. Sometimes I wonder if he's in there at all. He'll get stuck in an obvious loop. There's no question that there are severe cognitive difficulties going on. All right. I'm calling it right now. You, yes. You have to put the cat down. You have to. That's a quality of life thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's not fair to the cat to like force it to, you know. <laughs> Stay alive. Yeah. That's that's horrible. No, that's what would happen with um my dog last year. He His quality of life was going down a lot and he like could have barely walk. And so we had to put him down. He was like Aww. 13 years old. And, you know, it's very sad. But if the quality of life isn't there and they can't walk properly, it's. This is true. Yeah. Our vet, after months of tests and observation, uh, chalks us up to old age and probably brain lesions. I don't know if I totally agree, but it doesn't matter. What do you mean you don't agree? With the vet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like, I actually have a doctorate. Um, I lack the resources to get a third or fourth opinion. We've seen two vets now. I spent thousands since he fell ill. Oh, vet bills. After a grand? No, that's Sorry, oh, pal. that's what my mom says. She's like, we're not paying thousands of dollars for, no. you know, an old pet. Super me if the way we would deal with that if we had to take him to the vet and it was like pretty bad they would just go into the woods with dad and never come back oh that's so sad for another dog that he had cancer and the vet was like you're gonna have to spend ten thousand dollars and we're like no no sorry buddy <laughs> yeah i've spent thousands since he fell ill vet bills lab fees special foods medications supplements etc and have run out of emergency pet care funds i have to syringe feed him three times per day a syringe feeding takes about 40 minutes to do he copes pretty well with it but it's an enormous undertaking he's on cloline b12 le leucine potassium iron miralax and a high calorie supplement which he takes three times per day with each feeding this does not sound like a pet that wants to live <laughs> oh my god have you seen those memes on tiktok where it's like I put me out of my misery mother <laughs> it's like the 18 year old dog yeah this is just <laughs> sad this is sad and i totally get like loving your pet that you you know so much that you want to keep it alive but when it's this much it's where's the line yeah he pees on the floor often because his hyper tea makes him drink and urinate very often and he can't go to the litter box on his own he stopped cleaning himself so i also have to bathe him weekly he has trouble regulating his body temp so i also have to monitor that and keep him heated or cooled accordingly he 
heating pad, etc. Mind you, I do all of this myself. My husband might refill his water dish or clean up a puddle of urine here or there, but that's it. It's an enormous responsibility. At mm. least a fourth of my waking hours are devoted wholly to the cat. And most day, that's more like a third. I've been doing it since May of last year. No, 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 no. What? If that's your husband's cat, like that's his that's his problem to Whoa. deal with. No, just based on the title, I'm annoyed. <laughs> I'm tired. I can't make this cat better. He's never going to be better. I keep putting food and supplements into him so he won't starve to death. And to be honest, I could probably keep him alive like this for quite a while. But to what end, you know? Yeah. I'm not convinced he still has the capacity for happiness. And for me personally, that's my line. I'm ready to let this cat go. And I want to be clear that... It isn't because it's a lot of work to keep him alive, but because the amount of work that goes into it isn't doing anything but keeping him alive. Mm. And I feel that it is a selfish reach for a mere technicality. Absolutely. Husband does not agree. Oh. Too bad. You're not even taking care of this cat. What? He doesn't believe in euthanasia unless the animal is in clear, constant pain. Our cat is not in clear, constant pain. He's just not really there at all and hardly able to function. I feel like with the amount of medication you put him yeah. on, there's no way he could feel pain. Yeah, he's drugged. Oh my goodness. To my husband, life over death is gr greater than death. It's incredibly black and white to him. He remarks on this often. Quote, look at him sitting in his cat bed. He looks happy. <laughs> this is a moment he's sure to appreciate having the opportunity to live. <laughs> and the cat just has a 3,000 mile stare. <laughs> in the bed. He's walking in circles. This is very sad. <laughs> he's making his bed. <laughs> this is so sad. Uh oh, he says, uh, okay, if you say so. I'd be willing to have a conversation about this and hope that we can come to some sort of compromise or understanding, but he's honestly being a dick about it. Yeah. Yeah. He's being selfish. He's being selfish. This cat is in a lot of, well, maybe not a lot of pain, but like can't walk properly, is forced to be on like 50 different drugs. That's not a good life. The vor oh no, that's, this is way too soon. <laughs> that's too soon. Over a cat. Let the cat die, please. Please. <laughs> Last month, we were talking about the possibility of having him put down. He grabbed the cat up and kind of cuddled him to his chest and said to him, Sounds like she's ready to just give up on you. I don't know what the voice this is. Yeah, I'm kind of offended, but it's fine. <laughs> it's not exactly Southern. I don't think a Southern man would be saying this. He'd probably be like, oh, yeah, let's get rid of it. Okay, I'll give him a new voice. What, what's, what's his voice? English. <laughs> Sounds like she's ready to just give up on you. That checks out <laughs> so much. Okay. I told him that was completely unfair and that no one has put in the amount of effort I have to make this cat better slash more comfortable. It made me cry and I left the room. Uh -huh. He eventually came to me and admitted that was an awful thing to say. He apologized and acknowledged that I'm the one putting in the work and it wasn't his place to make those judgments i feel like whenever he was doing that he had the cat's arms and he was like he's like oh mother you're ready to give up on me <laughs> and she goes ah um i forgave him but we never continued the conversation because the wound was still a bit tender oh fast forward to last night He's holding the cat and remarking about how high maintenance he's becoming, kind of jokingly, but also an acknowledgement to my having spent a long time that day feeding and cleaning up after him. But then he says to the cat really clearly, but we're not going to murder you just because you're an inconvenience. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> I wonder how we would feel about if it was a kid. Would he say the same things? I'm hoping that they wouldn't put down the kid. <laughs> That is a different scenario. Because he's like treating this cat like a kid. This, yeah, this cat is also like very old. Yeah. All we know is that they've had the cat for seven years, but that it belonged to an older neighbor. So the cats had years before that as well. Yeah. It was all I could do to not completely blow the F up. Effing seriously? I mean, sure, that's easy to say when you're not the one who has to do it all. And if we're being frank here, if it were up to my husband, this cat would have starved to death months ago because there's absolutely no way in hell he'd have the discipline to shovel food into this cat's mouth three times a day. Not even effing remotely possible. In fact, he's told me multiple times to just stop syringe feeding the cat with the implication that nature will run its course. How is that not murder? Ooh. Wait, he's so hypocritical. He's like, I would rather this cat starve to death than like 
put them out uh, of their misery in the most, you know, humane way possible. Weird. God, I'm getting furious just typing that. How dare he say such a thing? I'm so mad. I understand and respect that he's got some kind of ethical issues about the merit of euthanasia, but at this point, I'm hard pressed to give an F. I know if I went and had the cat put down on my own, he'd never forgive me. Never. What an effed up, impossible situation. And this poor cat is stuck in limbo, just making it from one feeding to the next. <laughs> and now I'm thinking we shouldn't own pets together ever again. And I'm so happy we decided not to have kids. <gasps> Whoa. Ooh. I don't think she's implying that, you know, about the needing to put down a child. But I think. <laughs> but then why did she mention that last sentence? I think because she's saying um, he can't even put in like he doesn't have the discipline to take care of a cat. So he wouldn't take care of a human. Yeah. Mm, but he would make remarks about. Yeah. Her not being able to take care of the kid, maybe. Wow. Yeah. I think a pet is a good way to like. Trial run. Trial run a child. <laughs> Obviously, it's not the same thing, but, you know, it's it's I intro. I do see a trend. Like if couples get a pet, like a dog or something, yeah. like a year and a half later, there's a kid. There's a kid. They're prepping. But there are some relevant comments. Um, Short and Sweet 33 says, your husband is being a massive a-hole to both you and the cat, making snide remarks, accusing you of wanting to murder the cat when you do 99% of the work to keep him alive. Why is that, by the way? You don't have kids, so you aren't a stay-at-home mom. I assume you both work. Why are you the one with full responsibility for the cat? How are other household tasks split? Secondly, the cat is alive and presumably not in pain, but that doesn't mean he has any quality of life left. Exactly. It sounds like he doesn't. And your husband is prepared to accept stopping feeding the cat and having him suffer as he slowly starves to death, but not having him humanely and painlessly put down by a vet. WTF. This sounds like it is a lot more about his own personal issues and arbitrary moral in scare quotes views than it is about care for the cat or his well-being i literally said that totally agree links are not allowed on the sub but google pet quality of life scale to get some links to the criteria that vets use to determine if it is time for an animal to be put down maybe showing him these resources and having an objective and reasonable discussion will help but honestly i can understand why you're furious with your husband and maybe not in the mood for rational discussion i would be too but do it for the cat yeah. Great response. Yeah. 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 I have a, something to say about the natural course of life. If you really want your cat to live a natural course of life, just put it outside for a night. There you go. <laughs> okay. We have different. I'm just saying if he really wants it to be natural, that's what nature will do. Yeah. I mean, the cat clearly can't survive on its own. Yeah. OP says to the question, why is that, by the way, you don't have kids, so you aren't a stay-at-home mom? I assume you both work. OP responds, we're self-employed and work from home, so we're able to be near him 24-7. Other household tasks? Oh, man, that's another post comprised of a whole essay. But yeah, those things are mostly me. Ooh. I think, honestly, this might be grounds for divorce. I think this we might be edging into a divorce. Edging. And what would happen if you asked your husband which he thought was kinder to let the poor thing starve to death or to put him down with the best medical science we currently had. And OP responds, this is the crux of the problem. I know he has a history with a pet being put down before he felt it was necessary and an experience when he was younger with killing an animal to put it out of its misery, rural farm thing. <laughs> That's you, right? Yep. <laughs> but I wish you'd work through these things instead of projecting them onto me. That's great about the quality of life scale. I'm absolutely going to look that up when things are less emotional and we can hopefully continue this discussion like adults, then I think it'd be useful. Thank you. And then another commenter says, uh, Miar says, your husband should have been involved in taking care of this cat a long time ago if he really cares about it like he says he does. It seems like most of your conversations about the cat start with him making these cruel and accusatory comments about the cat and you're forced to take a defensive position. Start a discussion and make him understand how difficult and exhausting it is for you to continually take measures just to keep this cat functioning and that surviving doesn't equal living. In fact, you should divide up the tasks to involve him in caring for your cat because his lack of participation in the care of your cat is enabling his ignorance of the gravity of the situation. And if he gets sick of feeding it and wants to stop either out of laziness or some belief that it'll die painlessly, then get your vet to tell him how quick and painless an injection can be compared to effing starving your pet to death. I can't even wrap my mind around that logic. 
Um, and then OP respond to the quote of him making these cruel and accusatory comments about the cat and you're forced to take a defensive position. OP says, maybe the hardest part is that I don't actually want my cat to die. Of course you don't. Of course you don't want your cat to die. I feel like that's not the point at all. And your husband does not get that. Uh, OP continues, and having to sit here and wrap his death into a positive marketing campaign is very hard on me. I lost my mom 20 months ago to brain tumor. It took her six months from diagnosis to death, and even that was just absolutely brutal. I projected some weird messiah complex onto this cat for a long while. They shared a lot of abnormal neurological behavior my cat and mom and it was difficult to separate the experiences so close to my grieving but even i have now come to admit that there is no saving him i suppose i'm going to have to make an effort to include him more in the care tasks i think um, referring to the husband a part of me and i don't know how unfair it is suspects that he's going to end up feeling the exact emotions he's been projecting onto me that this is too much work and it'd be easier to just get it all over with so we can get back to a normal life. I think the first thing that Opie needs to do is get the husband, like force the husband to be involved. Yeah. Just be like, I'm not going to take care of this cat. And if you want to like keep him alive, sure. But the second that I see you not taking care of him, I'm like getting him euthanized. Yeah. Like give him an ultimatum. Yeah. That's a good ultimatum because one, the, the husband has some issues processing what yeah. happened to him in the past, but death is such a hard concept to comprehend as humans. Yeah. So he's probably also dealing with that and he needs to take, yeah, take care of the cat. Yeah. Live a day in her shoes. Yeah. Yeah. In the cat's shoes? I don't know if we want to live a day in the cat's shoes. <laughs> yeah. Live in her shoes. <laughs> if you live a day in the cat's shoes, you're like, oh my God, this cat needs to. <laughs> Please kill me. <laughs> Please. And then deleted responds, cats are very good at hiding pain. I think the fact that Kitty is basically starving to death, peeing himself and has trouble walking indicates he's probably suffering tremendously. Ooh. Kitty may not be bleeding or visibly hurt, but he's slowly shutting down. And while it's not an immediate pain of level 11 type, he must be constantly miserable. What you're suggesting is actually the most compassionate solution. And there is an update. I did not know that, that cats hide pain. I didn't know that either. I've never had a cat because I'm allergic to them. I had a cat once. Yeah. It was very sweet to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember it, but apparently like the cat would let me do whatever I wanted to, but then I'd <laughs> hug it at the end like I was little. Yeah. It'd never scratch me and I'd just oh, be like, Rrr. and the cat sweet. was like, Cuddly. Cuddly. Um, I'd be okay with the outside cat because I'm also allergic to them. Yeah, but you're technically not supposed to have an outside cat because they kill off bird population. They're considered an invasive species. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, outside cat, they get mice, they get other things. And plus they like bring them to you and they're like, here's a gift. I feel like on, you know, like a farm or something. Yeah. That makes sense. But just like in the neighborhoods, you know. Oh, yeah. No, not in the neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. But on a farm, I'd be like, yeah. On go, a farm. Go catch the mice. Go catch the mice. Um, but there is an update. Okay. I have this really impressive 27 year streak. 27 years. That 27 years. is what, like half your life? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. The streak is I have never broken a bone in my body in my whole life. Ever. Ever. Nothing. Really? Zero. Have you really been living then? See, that's the thing is I'm I'm kind of scared. If this happens, wh where am I going to turn? Yeah. I, honestly, I'm, I'm terrified. I don't know where to go. Yeah. Well, I feel like if you do ever break a bone, yeah. there is one place you should turn always. Where? ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. And all these doctors have actual reviews from real verified patients. We're talking about booking appointments with tens of thousands of top rated patient reviewed credible doctors and specialists. You can filter for ones that take your insurance and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor on ZocDoc is only 24 to 72 hours. Sometimes even the same day. Y'all, we all use ZocDoc and you should too. Go to ZocDoc.com slash OKOP and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's docdoccom slash OKOP, docdoc.com slash OKOP. Back to the show. It's been a little over a month since I made that last post, and I want to thank all the commenters for their advice. But one commenter specifically who I feel really helped me better understand my husband's position, if not his behavior, and made confronting him about this go a lot smoother. So this commenter, I believe, says... It sounds to me like he doesn't want to deal with death as anything more than an abstract concept, something that just happens rather than something you have to accept and prepare for. 
If you just don't think about it, it doesn't seem real, you know, it's scary and difficult. So avoiding really thinking about it is understandable. That could be why he's not helping you with the care that would force him to acknowledge the reality of the situation and why he's hinting that a natural starvation death is better. Because if the cat dies without you making the choice to help, it's just a thing that happened he has to accept rather than any choice he had to think about. I think he needs to talk, really discuss death to try and get to the root of this fear. It's a hard situation and you seem to be dealing it with it completely differently, more realistically for one than him. And he may seem resentful because he can't get to the place of acceptance that you have with the inevitable. Whoa, that's deep. Deep. All the other stuff's here. Yeah, that was deep. Whoa. That was the bottom of the iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is an OP does continue response, but I just wanted to say it feels like if the husband was the husband was given a trolley problem and he's like, you know, the trolley problem. It's like basically oh, you have yeah, one, you got yeah, one person and five people and then five people, but you're headed towards the five people and then you can decide to change the tracks to head towards the one person. But I feel like he would just let the five people die because he doesn't have to make a choice. Hmm. This is his trolley problem. And OP continues. You really nailed this, Tal and Faye. I think a lot of this has to do with my mom dying, which is still very fresh for all of us. Her death touched us in different ways. For me, it gave me a weird manic complex about having to save the cat. Looking back, that has to be unhealthy for me. I can't really stress how much of my time went into caring for the cat. And I can sit here and say my husband wouldn't help me do any of it, and it'd be partially true. But the bigger part of the truth, none of his efforts would have been good enough because my standards were so unreasonably high. I didn't really want him involved because his investment didn't match mine. I couldn't at the time I made that post, but I could admit that now. Some of the blame there is my own. For him, my mom's death has made him face his own mortality. He turned 40 last month and he's been very avoidant of death almost angry whenever I brought it up, you know, mm. I can't really relate to how his experience with the cat must have been because I was too busy trying to be a hero about it. Wow. This is so deep. This is ex existential. Uh, we were both unfairly projecting things onto the cat for me, my mom, for him himself. <laughs> I understand that now only accepting that the cat couldn't be saved and it was just his time to go. I think that was good for me in a kind of roundabout way. It helped me better accept my mom's death. Oh, wow. But for him, it was nothing like that. Accepting the cat's death, even having a direct hand in it led to a much darker place. The cat is a metaphor for death. <laughs> this is what it reads like. It is. I would like to know more about the husband, like how old he was whenever he had that traumatic experience with, with putting the down. Cat. A, I feel like he must have been a pet down. Yeah, the first time because working in a royal farm area, whenever things like that happen, we don't really talk about it. Yeah, we just like it's a way of life, and you have to kind of have a cold shoulder about it. But my parents did a good job of like giving me a different perspective of it. But I feel like he didn't have a place to voice that safely. Yeah, that's true. This is way of like avoiding it because that's how he did whenever he was younger. True. But knowing all that, I was able to have a more productive conversation with him. He still didn't want to do it. Oh my goodness. He even openly confessed that he knew putting the cat down was the objectively right thing to do and that he understood where I was coming from, but he just couldn't get past being the direct cause of his death. Playing God, he called it. He kept saying all these things about how the cat could still dream, could still lay in the sun, could still be petted and curl up in his bed. And if he died, he'd lose those things. OP continues, I read something online and I don't have a link and can't remember verbatim, but it went something like, uh, animals don't think of the future and don't fondly recall the past. They only know what's happening right now. They aren't humans, I explained to him. They don't have a concept of this might be better tomorrow, the medication might start working, a miracle might happen. So it's unfair to project human concepts onto them. They don't have the ability to put the pleasure of an afternoon laying in the sunshine above suffering because that suffering will eclipse it. Oh my goodness, this is, <laughs> OP is coming at him with the facts. It wasn't just one conversation. We kept it going. I told him how much it hurt to imply I was trying to murder the cat or that I only wanted him gone because of convenience. And he apologized. He said he felt embarrassed about reacting that way, but that it was more internally directed at himself than me. I also recruited his mom. We didn't gang up on him or anything, but I felt like it'd be helpful to have someone outside of the situation speak to him about it. And I think it was. Oh, good. That's good. About a week after I made that post, the cat began showing blood in his urine. Oh. This is absolutely the time to, like, I mean, if not before, now. <sighs> oh, my God. Like, this is obviously, there's pain. I told my husband it was time. 
I wasn't willing to walk into the vet's office with the only intention of treating a trivial bladder problem. To what end? And I also wasn't willing to watch him strain to urinate and be in obvious pain. Neither was acceptable. He agreed that this was the objectively right course of action, but it was very hard on him. I made the decision on a weekend, so we had to wait for Monday morning. This gave us a couple great last days with our baby. I felt like my husband mostly avoided thinking of it until Monday morning, though. When it came, the cat was having a very rare good day. This went two very different ways for us. I was glad. I thought his last day on this earth isn't going to be awful. He ate more than usual. He was more alert than usual. He'd be ending his life on a positive note. I was relieved. But this caused my husband a lot of agony. I'm sure you can imagine, quote, he's having such a good day for once. Can't he just enjoy it? He wanted to put it off, but I said no, because then we just want to put it off an another day, then another day, then another day. There was never going to be a good day for it. He couldn't come with me to have it done, which was something I completely understood and was okay with. I had another family member ready to go with me so that I wasn't alone. Oh, that's sad. I like, I understand that he couldn't come, but still it's sad to have to like, yeah, drive your cat to the vet oh yeah also there's a thing where like close to the end of their life a pet can like, kind of seem more alert uh, i don't want to go into everything that happened because it's still a bit fresh and was very upsetting but i will say that watching my husband's last goodbye to the cat was probably the most gutting heartbreaking thing i've ever witnessed i've been with this man for almost 14 years i've seen him upset i've seen him sad I've seen him cry. This grief was a whole new level. And if I ever had doubts about his love for the cat, then I was wrong. And I feel ashamed for ever thinking it. We buried him together in our backyard beneath a shady tree. This is so sad. We still have the instinct that we have a cat. We still look around our feet when we push out computer chairs to make sure we won't run over something. I still wake up at 3 a.m. and get that moment of panic that I've missed a syringe feeding. He still closes the hallway door, even though there's nothing to keep out of the back rooms. I still wake up and expect something to meet me when I enter the living room. We still find ourselves setting aside little scraps of meat on our dinner plates, but quickly eating them instead. It's been very difficult, but every day gets a little better. It's probably the first time in the last three years we haven't had an illness or death hanging like a cloud over our lives. Thanks again for all your advice and well wishes. They really meant a lot. Oh, there is an edit, but oh my goodness. It's so sad. That's so sad. The, the thing that's very interesting to me is the subconscious little maneuvers that they're doing. Yeah. Like computer chair, closing the door. You definitely have those for a while. Yeah. You don't yeah. even realize it. Because it's just, it's like muscle memory. You're just, you know, huh. you expect to see them and then they're not there. Dang. This makes me want a dog now. Yeah. Losing the cat makes you want a dog. But like something to take care of yeah have memories with yeah eventually we'll get a house where we can have a dog yes okay dog yeah yeah <laughs> that's his name okay dog <laughs> okay uh dojo okay dojo and then you spell it out it spells doggo oh uh, <laughs> dojo that's cute i can't reply to every single one but i just really wanted to thank everyone for sharing their stories about their own experiences with their pets. It may seem silly, but those kinds of comments on this post, and especially the last one, were such a huge help to me. I didn't have much support at the time. No one came along and reassured me, you're not making a mistake, this is the right thing. I just kind of had to be the main advocate and wrap it into the prettiest package possible so I could sell it to my husband as the right thing. The vet wouldn't even come in and talk to me without me paying a complete exam fee. No one offered those kinds of words to me. So you all have no idea how major a support system that was and continues to be for me. Thank you so much. OP pays cat tax. <laughs> I would love to share some pictures of Sasha. Thanks so much for asking. He was such a good cat. He never got into trouble or went out of bounds. Very chill and laid back dude. A couple of pics of here of him here with our hamsters who he was convinced were strangely caged kittens. That is so adorable. Uh, and then Fliss Shield says, you did the right thing by your furry pal. It's effing hard and it effing sucks. More hugs. Opie says, oh man, but if this isn't a concise and accurate summation, lol, thank you for the hugs. Aww. I'm sending hugs to you, OP. Hugs, hugs, hugs. It's really, really hard to lose a pet. But I think at the end of the day, we've said this over and over, you can't let your desire to have a pet outweigh their quality of life. Yeah, this is true. 
Yeah. If you're really feeling sad though, please join our Discord and we have a pets, <laughs> and we channel, have a pets channel. And you can go look at more pets. Yeah. Please do. Fun pets. Uh, this cute. is this is really tough. Um back home we would have definitely taken care of this cat. Well, it would have been an outdoor cat to start with, and then nature would have had its way. And then we'd be like, dang, what happened to old kitty? Old kitty. Uh, never came home. But this is really sad. Because, I mean, if they're living with you and stuff, it's it's a family member. Yeah. No, it definitely is hard. But just the fact that I, I'm still, like, kind of wary about the fact that the husband wasn't helping out. Because OP was like, oh, well, you know, was taking kind of the blame for that and saying, well, he wouldn't have, you know, done it to my standards of taking care of the cat. But OP also mentioned how um, the husband wasn't doing other household chores. Yeah. yeah. There are some other red flags in this relationship that I think need to be addressed. Some insights I see with the husband is he has trouble taking lead with things that he knows needs to be done. And if he can't do it, he's just going to put it off Yeah, and put it off. And until it's, you know, I don't know when he'll even take care of the problem, but yeah. he just seems to keep delaying it. A procrastinator. He's a procrastinator. I think that that thing has to deal with his childhood for sure. Yeah. And it might also, we, I mean, he talked about how, or OP said that he kind of had to confront his mortality when OP's mom died. So maybe there's just, but he would get angry whenever she would bring up death yeah huh this is an interesting, interesting one yeah no i think he needs to go to therapy yeah therapy yeah. join the men's group get a new cat have someone hear you yeah because i don't know how often he was sharing his emotions but yeah well it seems like she's like oh he would cry i've seen him cry i've seen him be sad but this level of grief was new gotcha but you know what i'm not grieving what's that <laughs> this next story this next story woohoo my husband abruptly adopted a Burmese python. It terrifies me and I want to rehome it. Riley, would you ever have a pet snake? No. I disagree. I would have a pet snake. I think they're really cute. I had a friend who had a pet snake and I thought he was really cute. I'll have a pet snake with legs. A lizard? Yeah. <laughs> I'll do that. Anyway, scared of snakes. Oh, that's not good. Says, um, for context, I'm 24 female and my husband is 26 male. Maybe this would be more appropriate on r slash snakes, but the problem is less about the Python itself and more about my relationship with my husband. So personally, I don't think so. <laughs> Imagine putting this in the r slash snakes looking for relationship yeah. advice. <laughs> Not the right audience. <laughs> the snake people are like, I don't know much about relationships, but I can tell you about snakes. <laughs> I can tell you how, how to maintain a relationship with your, your snake. python, yeah, your yeah. python <laughs> but not with your husband. <laughs> yeah, they're like, hmm, let me relate this back to the python, to, to use it as a metaphor. <laughs> your husband is a snake in the grass. Six months ago, our corn snake unexpectedly died. Oh, so they've had snakes before. Okay. My husband and I were both very upset. He was a cute little guy and still very young. My husband has owned several small reptiles during his lifetime, and he told me he was thinking of trying a milk snake this time instead of a corn or garter. Instead, two months after our corn died, he came home with a baby Burmese python. Okay, I'm going to have to see what this looks like. They're big. They get really big. I'm not really afraid of snakes. Honestly. I'm not afraid of snakes either. I'm more of a spider kind of guy. I'm also not afraid of spiders. I would say I'm afraid of hornets. Yeah, no, they get huge. <gasps> oh my fucking God. I, I don't even think it's like fair to own a Burmese python in a house. These guys? They're big. They're very strong. And they can be very, I think they can be quite nice if you train them or something. Or like, I could be totally wrong about that. I don't know too much about snakes. Snake alert. Snake alert. If you're scared of snakes. If you're scared of snakes, snake alert. Just stop reading right now. Yeah. Apparently, it's always been his dream to own a Burmese. Not only am I pissed that he got something like that without consulting me on the upside where we live, they are legal, but I had several reservations that had only grown since we've owned it are they legal in california do we know that um, yeah that's a good question yeah i'm gonna say florida i'm guessing florida that makes sense it usually is this is some florida activity right here people in florida love snakes yeah i mean they're i feel like they just go down to the bottom of florida and pick one up and take it home you just adopt a snake on the side of the road okay florida texas georgia oklahoma cannot have a burmese python in california whoa these snakes can grow up to 23 feet and weigh over 200 pounds pet oh 
That's not a pet. Oh my God, that's so big. Uh. Jesus. Opie continues, I have generalized anxiety disorder and that thing triggers my anxiety like no other. When I was doing research about Burmese pythons, I kept reading stories about them killing pets, children, and even their owners. Oh my God. So now I'm freaked out and have barely slept for months. Oh, for four months. <sighs> this is made worse by the fact that my husband has no experience with large snakes and the larger the python grows, the more it shows and also by us having a cat the other snakes we've had our corn snake and my husband's old garter snake pose no threat but now i constantly worry that the python is going to get out and eat her that is terrifying i've taken to locking the cat in our bedroom at night which interferes with her sleep since she meows and scratches at the door but i'm constantly worrying about her when she's home alone I'll reiterate, this thing is effing huge. He's already six feet long. Oh my God. That is longer than me. A few inches shorter than me. <laughs> That's how tall I am. Just to put that out there. <laughs> I am six foot. I'm home more than my husband, so I have to feed it and change its substrates often. Substrates? I don't know what that is. I hate doing both so much, especially now that he's graduated to eating rabbits and pigs. Rabbits and pigs? Pigs? Pigs are big. Like live pigs? You're bringing live pigs home? How expensive is it to feed this yeah creature like rabbits if i was feeding a snake i just would keep it at mice i mean that's what usually if you have a snake you're feeding it mice like live mice yeah but like but this rabbits and pigs i'm gonna guess baby pigs that's so sad i, I can't even comprehend this the pigs part oh my god i'm so confused and shocked I honestly think that since my husband brought him home without consulting me, that caring for it should be his sole job, but I'm not going to let it go hungry or live in its own waste out of pride. Again, we have these husbands that won't take care of the pet that they brought home. I honestly don't think we'll be able to give the snake the best quality of life, which I think is essential for all pets. He's getting too big for the tank he's in, which is his third since we've gotten him, and I don't think we have the room in our house for the enclosure my husband wants to build him. His food is very expensive. Yeah, if you're getting him whole pigs. <laughs> and eating into our savings, but no. it's what he needs, so we can't downgrade. The python does not deserve to live in a tiny space and eat inadequate food because my husband wanted one as a kid. At the same time, it's a good possibility it could eat us out of house and home or just eat you. I don't want kids while we own a python and these things can live up to 20 years. I don't want to never have children, which I've dreamed of because of a python. No, 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 no. Major red flag Major that red flag. he did not consult her. Because she's like now figuring Pick, this yeah. out on her own. Yeah. Like, okay, the python's here. How can I live life with this thing? With this thing, have a child. Apparently it eats kids. Apparently it eats pets. Apparently it's uh, owners. Oh, don't worry, it's going to only live for 20 years. Yikes. Um, because of all these reasons, but especially the ones about our cat and its quality of life, I think we should rehome the python, preferably to a wildlife sanctuary or something. Yep. Absolutely. I gently brought all of this up to my husband, how much mental anguish it causes me, how worried I am for a cat, how the snake is unsustainable, and all he's done is tell me to get over it. Accuse me of not caring about his happiness. You're not caring about it. You're... Your wife's happiness and tell me I'm pre being prejudiced against animals that aren't cute and cuddly. None of this is true. Not even the last accusation. I liked his smaller snakes a lot. Yeah, we already know that they've had smaller snakes in the past and this was never an issue. The smaller snakes were funner because they didn't cost as much yeah. and they didn't scare the living F out of you. It's like having a, a tiger in your house and being like, hey, I don't, I'm not comfortable with having a tiger in the house. And they were like, well, you just don't like cats that are big. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah. How can I communicate productively with my husband about this issue? He already loves the snake, and I think that's getting in the way of him seeing reason. There is an edit. For the snake people, I acknowledge that now that our husbandry is probably wrong, proving my point even more. Also, I have been informed that the snake probably wasn't a baby if it's at this size now, so take that into account. I'm not the most knowledgeable about snakes. Ooh. And there are some relevant comments. Yeah, what do you think she should do? I mean, obviously, I think the the right choice is to take the snake to a um, wildlife reserve. But I don't know what to do if the, the husband isn't leaving or isn't um, on the same page on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. Because like as a husband, you want to make sure like your wife yeah, is feeling feel protected, safe. safe. And if you bring home a 
pet like this and she wants to have kids like within the next three to five years dude you gotta make some compromises yeah stick with the cute snakes not the big python yeah you could still have snakes those were never an issue it's just a giant python it's also not fair to the python it's not fair to the python because like you don't have the resources for it you're having to dip into your savings to take care of this python i know you've always wanted to have it but wait till you're in another stage of life to do that yeah i want old nice looking car but i'm 23 i can't do that right now yeah you don't have the funds for it you don't have the space for it that's a big one yeah and I think that you should continue having these conversations. Maybe someone else has a better idea of what OP should say to her husband. Yeah. But I think if he's truly not listening to you, like maybe consider. I just think it's very immature that he did not beforehand talk to her. Because that's a it. big decision. Huge decision. I mean, it's a huge snake. Every foot is another addition to the decision. <laughs> Relevant comments. Oh, dude. OP says, as far as worrying about the python getting out and killing the cat slash future kids slash us, OP's husband says, I won't let it get out. You need to get on new anxiety medication. <gasps> Unbelievable. Oh. Never mind the fact that both the corn and the garter snake escaped from their tanks. Oh, my God. OP's husband says, well, what are you going to do? Let it starve just because you don't like it? That's cruel. And then he says that we have room for the enclosure and that we'll find money to keep buying it food. He says, I'm ridiculous to not want babies while we have a python and says everything will be fine. I don't find any of his rebuttals particularly compelling because they're just, no, that won't happen to a concern of mine without explaining why it won't happen. I can't believe he's using her like anxiety as like against her yeah even someone who doesn't have anxiety would probably be worried about this i'm worried i might have anxiety but yeah, i don't i do have anxiety uh and i would still be worried like i have this anxiety husband. thinking about it does that count that if i i have anxiety not exactly but thank you for your solidarity you're, you're welcome <laughs> This is not a red flag for you. This is a red flag for the husband. Oh, okay. Cool, 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 cool. I knew it was for me. I have no red flags. For the husband, big red flag. I just, he's not listening to his wife at all. He's not. It's a fucking snake. Ah! I had to like take away the picture looking at it. I think I've now grown a fear of snakes. Yeah. And I was so okay with my life until this. I still like snakes, but I just know that I couldn't raise a python. No. Ugh. Snakes or spiders? Which one are you guys afraid of? But there is an update. Yeah. Hopefully something good happens. Yeah, they they get rid of it. Yeah, they get rid of it. it goes and lives happily in a reserve. First of all, I have to say thank you for the outpouring of support I got, especially from the reptile enthusiasts who happen to be browsing the sub. You guys are awesome. Maybe you should have gone on r slash snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday night while I was replying to people in my post several people suggesting talking to my husband's friend who owns Burmese pythons is an experienced re reptile keeper and could be a huge help. I was too blinded by the situation and my own anxiety to even think of that. I messaged him on Facebook Thursday night and told him the situation. He was shocked at how bad things were. But apparently he tried to warn my husband that, that owning small snakes and then jumping to a Burmese python is like thinking owning house cats makes you qualified to own a tiger. That's exactly what I said. You're getting too good at those, these Reddit stories. Literally. But my husband didn't listen. He's been busy going to reptile shows. This is the husband's friend. And he breeds venomous cobras he's kind of badass so he only saw the snake in person once we just got it and was immediately disturbed when i told him about the overfeeding my husband's desire to start it on live food and the fact that it free roams and is handled alone wait a second i didn't even think about the live food if you're teaching a snake to eat live food and then it sees your cat yeah it's gonna eat your cat 100 percent, it's gonna eat your cat also, it free roams? What do you mean it free roams? He told me he'd come over the next day, Friday, and give my husband a real talking to, as well as do anything he could do to help us rehome it. Nice. I decided I couldn't live another day in the house like that, and neither could my cat. So Friday morning, I moved out to my mother's while my husband was at work. It was a bit sneaky, but I knew that if I tried to leave while he was home, he tried to convince me to stay. I called him on his lunch break, though, and told him I'd left until the snake was gone. He was very upset, but started accusing me of being so petty as to let a snake wreck our marriage. I had nothing productive to say to that. Nah, it's not the snake wrecking it. Yeah. You're ruining it. 
because you're not listening to your wife. Oh, I'm just I'm just so feel so icky right now. Like with the ah. Uh. Well, my husband's friend was so angry at what he saw of the snake that when he got to the house when my husband was home from work, he gave him the tongue lashing of his life and told him in plain terms that now that he saw how woefully inadequate we were as big snake keepers, there was no way he was going to let that snake stay at our house. Being yelled at really affected him. When my husband drove over to my mother's to talk to me, he looked like a kicked puppy. He broke down and told me that he loved me, that he was sorry for the hell he'd put me through, and that it taken having reason yelled to him by an expert for him to really see what was going on, and that he understood now that the snake could no longer live with us. I know that at that point that the sorrow he felt was due to having a snake taken away, not of real understanding, not yet. So don't worry, he's not completely off the hook. It was cathartic to hear this, though. Mm. His friend contacted a herpetology society he worked with regularly and then a member of the society whose specialty is rehabilitating snakes that irresponsible pet owners get and then mistreat on his ranch. So Snake went yesterday to the guy's ranch where he'll be fed the right food and go on a diet, apparently, oh, nice. and live in a space big enough for him. Let's go. Yeah, That's great. I'm so happy. But how much were they feeding him? Because they said overfeeding and I didn't realize OP didn't really mention that before and maybe she didn't really understand that it was overfeeding hmm. until like the guy said it. My husband and I have talked about this and he acknowledged that his fervent desire to fulfill his childhood dream made him careless and selfish. That he wasn't trying to be malicious towards me but he just wanted the snake so badly he'd do and say anything to keep it. It still seems like though that he hasn't learned, which I'm not expecting this early, but it's still a mite disappointing. He talked yesterday about getting a ball python and I put my foot down. I don't think we should get another snake for a long time. Unbelievable. He learned nothing. Pythons are like the ones that like wrap around you though, right? Yeah. I remember them coming to our school when I was younger. Yeah, same. Yeah, ball pythons are smaller. No, he ruined it. They could have just kept getting small snakes and everything would have been fine. On Sunday, I sat him down and asked him to tell me the truth of how he got the python. Because walking into a pet shop for a milk snake and just finding a Burmese was sounding more and more implausible the more I thought about it. Yeah, I feel like he like planned this. He admitted that he arranged to get one with a breeder online while he was telling me he wanted a little snake, meaning he was actively lying to me. Break up with this man. Divorce him. This breeder is also a state away, meaning my husband participated in something illegal when he met up with him to get it. Since transporting Burmese pythons across state lines is against the Lacey Act. Ay, ay, ay. I'm very angry about this. I'm upset about his lies and I'm upset that he blew me off for months. He admitted he lied just because he knew I'd say no, which shows such an immaturity that it almost disgusts me. I'm upset that he broke the law. Oh my God. This gets worse and worse. I'm upset that he only listened to what I told him when it came from someone else. Apparently he's been having a quarter life crisis that he didn't tell me about because he feels that he should have accomplished more with his life at 26. He never went to college. I feel sympathy for him with that, but that's no excuse to treat me badly. Absolutely not. He's so immature. Yeah. Like you're 26 and this is, um, yikes. I moved back home with Kitty last night, but our marriage is in severe jeopardy right now due to the lying and the lack of respect my husband has shown me. But I made vows to stick with him and I don't take those lightly. We're going to be getting counseling, which I hope will make him see what was wrong with what he did rather than a knee jerk response to being in trouble, so to speak, and will strengthen us. If not, well, I'll have to consider my options. And there is a PS and one more update. I don't like his attitude still. I don't like his attitude. And I understand not wanting to like divorce him right away over this, but I think it is a red flag to keep an eye out on and, you know, make sure he's not doing this again. Yeah, because I mean, already one strike for not communicating beforehand. Not communicating and then reacting this way. You could have come to like realization with your wife. You had an expert to tell you this. Yeah. Blows my no, mind. That's the thing. Like the wife brought those concerns forward and he didn't listen to her until someone else outside was like, hey, don't do that. That's wild. I also think that's a lot. Lack of respect to your wife. Yeah. But there is a PS. Um, people were saying in the other posts that we were actually feeding the snake guinea pigs and that I was lying to make the snake look bad. Well, I was fudging the truth, but not in that way. We were feeding it dead piglets. That's what I thought. I get needing to feed an animal the things that it needs. Piglets? Yeah. However, this is a huge undertaking for someone who did not agree to it. 
and the husband's not even doing it. My husband's cousin owns a working ranch with several pigs and my husband was buying them from him for a pretty penny. I didn't want to say because I thought people would focus on the snake eating baby animals and start calling for its blood instead of offering me advice. Mm. No, again, uh, animals got to eat when an animal's got to eat. That's not the issue. It's just the husband. Wow. And a final update. Whoa, there's more? There is more. Wait a sec. Okay. We already gave our thoughts on this. So the snake is gone. Snake's gone. Yeah. We found out that was rehoused. He wants another snake. Yeah. But she's like, no. And we're hoping they're going to counseling now. Hopefully. Okay. Update two. Hi, I'm back. The snake is still gone, but I guess I'm coming back out of desperation. People messaged me wanting to know how I was doing. Aww. On the surface, therapy has been going well. My husband has been doing everything right. He's been contrite, open-minded, and treats me like a princess at all times. That's good. I can tell at home that he's making a conscious effort to listen to my opinions and thoughts and incorporate our therapist's suggestions into our life. I feel like the hugest be saying this, but I don't think it's enough. I think that that was such a big thing that he did. And I feel like it's fair to not be over it. I just want to know what his effort is afterwards. Yeah. Is his attitude still the same? Yeah. Well, it seems like it's changed, but you know. He doesn't seem like he wants the relationship. Yeah. I don't know. OP continues. Over these past few weeks, I've had to come to terms with the fact that something about how I view my husband has fundamentally changed. And finally, after extensive soul searching a few days ago, I realized what it was. I have no respect for his intelligence anymore after all this. <laughs> just like he's a freaking idiot. That is very, very important to me. And now it's just gone. And I don't know how it can come back without him getting a personality overhaul. It's killed my physical attraction to him. I normally have a high libido. And prior to all this, we made love four to five times a week. Now, since all this went down, we've been intimate three times a week or just total. I would say total. Oh, to be fair, while Snake was here, we were down to two to three times a week, but it was still more frequent than this. Ooh. Yikes. I think it would be so funny if this was posted on r slash snakes. She's like, my libido is down. And they're like, well, I can only tell you about Snake's libido. <laughs> Despite all the changes he's making, he's still himself. And I don't think I can like who I know him to be now. He's still his goofy, absent-minded self. Who needs me to balance the checkbook and pack his lunch? Oh my God. Oh no. No, no, no. I can't respect that anymore. I don't want to be his mom or a naggy sitcom wife. I used to love doing these things for him. Throughout our relationship, I've taken care of him, patched him up and helped him solve his problems. I always saw it as the ultimate expression of love. Now I'm just sick of it. He can tell something's still wrong. He's irritated about my lack of forgiveness and lack of sex drive lately when he's objectively doing all the right things. But his lack of understanding towards my apprehension makes my feelings even more pronounced. I realized the other day that I love him dearly as a friend. I've known him since I was nine years old, but no longer as a husband. Ouch. That's rough. That devastates me. I can't believe I'm thinking divorce after less than a year of marriage. Oh my. Wow. I feel like such a failure. I haven't broached these feelings in therapy yet because they crystallized only a few days ago, but I don't know how to start because I know saying them will mean my marriage will be over. I have talked to my mom and friends about this and they all tell me to wait longer, to stick it out because I made vows. But I feel like I found out something fundamental about my husband that I wish I never had and that nothing can be the same now. Ooh, ouch, ouch, ouch. I mean, I don't love the thing about the vows. I don't think you owe someone that you're not in love with anymore. Even if you've like married them, I think that I think that was a pretty big thing to find out. Like, I feel like it's fair to not be able to forgive your husband over that. Perhaps. Yeah. I feel like he could have made a comeback for sure. He could have. He was trying to do the right things. The right thing was whenever she voiced her opinions and you should have took like the wrong thing. The strike one, you took it home without talking to her and then yes he lied to her broke the law oh shoot this thing lives up 20 years and it could eat my cat and or kid yeah we should probably get rid of it yeah prior things he could have done and i think it's fair for her to be like he literally only listened when someone else told him yeah like she had to bring someone else into the relationship only being like uh, apologetic 
because the therapist told him. So like when when are we going to get like him realizing that he needs to take accountability? Yeah. Yeah. And he's still having her make his lunches. Balance a checkbook. Yeah. It seems like throughout the story he's been really immature and just like I I totally get her being like yeah he's not intelligent yeah and I feel like in a way this guy's not being very his own man he's not being independent yeah not being independent like as your own woman you are doing your own thing you're making it happen being your own man you're like you know leading and like you got something going on it just feels like she's kind of mothering him yeah it's just not a healthy relationship. It's like a mother-child relationship rather than a husband-wife. Like he he brings up home a pet and she's forced to take on the mother role of like, we cannot have a pet like that. But she's taking care of it, feeding the pet. Yeah, I think it's fair for her to consider divorce. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so sad to see. After a year of relationship. Oh. And they knew each other since they were nine years old, which also might have contributed to this, you know, marriage. They've known each other so long. They probably started dating when they were young. Felt forced into it. They might not have felt forced into it, but like you don't really... Know anyone else? I guess you don't know anyone else. You, you don't know what, what's outside of that. It's really interesting, the emotional intelligence part. Yeah. It's absent. But that's the whole story. The snake is gone. They're on the road to divorce. Everything's good. Everything's good. Yeah. I think my dad used to own a snake and then my mom made him get rid of it. Get rid of it before I was around. Was it a big snake? Yeah. He just like let it out in the woods. It's terrifying. I'm just imagining like a snake being let out like in the wild and you like you're walking around one day and you see a giant like Burmese python in the woods. Like, how did this get here? <laughs> Burmese pythons aren't even like native to and this it's area. It's like eating a baby deer. Yeah. Oh. That's terrifying. That is terrifying. Yikes. Yikes. Um, sorry snake people yeah i'm very into snakes um but i think you have to know how to care for any pet that you get neutral (laughs) riley's neutral about snakes but that that's all the stories that we have for you today yes if you love us make sure to subscribe we love you and see see you tomorrow. tomorrow